Today I'm going to show you how to tie a Henry's Fork Salmon Fly. I'm going to really effective fly, real pretty simple fly um, with the salmon fly hatch coming up. It's uh, time to start thinking about filling our boxes uh, for mid-May. Uh, I'm using a Dairiki 280, the hopper hook. Uh, the reason I'm using this hook versus a standard hook is uh, I really like the hooking capacity and, and the nice wide gape for keeping fish on. You start by attaching your thread. Give yourself a pretty good thread base. And I'm going to stop the thread just into the bend of the hook. Uh, for the tail, I'm using black elk. Put it in the stacker. It's important to get kind of all the wispy stuff out of there. And there's always some tips that are broken that you want to get out. Right, and when I tie my tail, it's going to be fairly short. few good thread wraps. Uh, try to keep that thread away from the tip of the tip of the hook. You'll for sure break it. Every time that thread hits it, it'll it'll for sure break. When I clip this, I'm gonna clip it up the body a little ways and tie it down. And this will ensure that I keep a nice level body for when I tie for when I dub the body. I won't have a big drop off. Okay, I'm going to tie in a brown saddle. I'm just tie it in butt first. I'm going to strip the stem, tie that in. And I'm using a Uni Fire Orange 6 up for this fly for my thread. Uh, for the body, I'm going to use the Hairline Dubbing, Dubbing Rust Orange. Okay, so that's my body. This is a bullet head, so make sure you leave plenty of space for that bullet head. I'm going to wrap my saddle around. Tie it off. I'm going to clip the saddle hackle so there's stubble. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right. Now you don't have to do this, but I like to. I'm just going to add just a few strands of crystal flash for an underwing. So this is like three. I'm going to tie it in and then fold it back over. So I have like a total of six. Clip it where it is even with the end of the tail. Now I'm going to use natural elk hair for the wing.
this back to where it's even with the end of the tail. I'm going to make a couple loose wraps and then pull it down on my thread and tighten it. Now I'm going to break this up. So I'm going to take some of my elk hair and lift it up and make a wrap. Lift some more up, make a wrap. I'm going to keep doing that until I get down to the very bottom. And this will ensure that every single piece of hair is tied in tight. That way the bottom can't slip out and you lose the whole wing. That's all tied in. I'm going to just wrap it and get it all tied down nice and tight. I'm going to move my thread up to just, just behind the eye. Now for the head I'm going to use black deer hair uh, for its spinability and its floatability. Fairly large clump for the bullet head. And it's important there's always fuzz in this deer hair and elk hair that you want to get out. Throw it in the stacker. Okay. Now it's important when you switch this around to always keep it pinched so your tips stay nice and even. So before I let go of one hand, I'm going to make sure it's nice and pinched with the other. So for this, I'm going to kind of eyeball where I want this to be. So if I, if I tie it in too short, I'm not going to have enough room to push back and form a bullet head and a nice collar. If I tie it too long, I don't want my, my fibers clean back in here. I'm going to want the tips, after I fold it back, I'm going to want the tips about halfway into the body. So when I do that, I'm going to push the deer hair straight over the eye so it's centered. I'm going to pinch it. And I'm going to wrap. Now I can go in here with it still pinched around and trim this deer hair. I can pull this forward. get some good solid wraps in here to get it nice and secure so it doesn't spin. OK, 
Okay, now that this is secure, give it a good kind of yank and make sure it's not going to go anywhere. Make sure you got it tight in really well. I'm going to move my thread back to the base of the wing. I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to push on the eye of the hook. And I've got it pulled back nice and tight. I'm going to wrap. My bullet head. And so now I could trim the bottom and whip finish this and we'd be done with the classic Henry Spork salmon fly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple legs on it. So I'm taking some black flexi floss or sexy floss or whatever you want to call it, uh, depending on who makes it. I'm just going to tie one in on either side. The reason I like the flexi floss is because it's much more durable than rubber. And it can withstand the abuse of adjusting after it's been tied on without breaking. A lot of times, if you're adjusting it well, after you tied the fly and it's all tied off, uh, the rubber can break and you just lost your rubber legs. Alright, now that i got some good tight wraps on these, I'm going to do a hand whip finish. Uh, the whip finisher tool just doesn't do a great job of going over that bullet head. Pull it tight, clip it off. I'm going to trim my legs a little short. So this is the top view here. Now I'm going to go underneath and trim that deer hair from the underneath of the body. So it looks like that. And that's your finished Henry's Fork Rubber Lake Salmon Fly.